Okay, so we've done some dimensions. We've learned how to set up a dimension style. We have uh, learned how to set up leader styles, different types of leaders. We've gone uh, over single line and multi-line text and how to set them all up. And we've gone over styles. <clears throat> Let's put it all together as far as our annotation goes. I am going to close out my ribbon. Actually, I'm going to change my workspace. I want to go back to my workspace with what I'm used to using now. I don't have my uh, command alias is set up yet, so <clears throat> you may see me enter some commands that don't exist because I haven't set up my aliases. But All right, let's put everything together. I'm going to go into to, uh, paper space here, and I'm going to set up a border. Uh, let's do a rectangle that is... Um, let's see, we'll do an eight, this 8.5 eight by 11 paper. So let's do it 10.5 by 8. Oops, did not do my dimensions. From 0, 0, 0. Dis, uh, dimensions 10 by uh, 8 point. Or, dang it, let's try this again. Uh, 0, 0, 0. I actually want it 10.5 by 8. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> happens to actually match whatever paper size I thought that was. What is my, uh, let's see, page setup manager. Modify, yeah, eight and a half by eleven inches. We're gonna set you to DWG by P DWG, PDF, ACAD, extents, uh, center of the plot. Everything else is good to go. Perfect. Look at that. It's right on the money. Centered. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm gonna pick a. Uh, we're at quarter scale for this thing. Let's go to something smaller, like eight scale. Not too small. Right in between three sixteenths. That's perfect. I'm gonna shore up my uh, uh, my viewport here. Okay. Which, all right. So I'm gonna leave that in the center, and I'm gonna start dimensioning. But I don't have my dimension style set up yet, so I'm gonna put my preferred dimension style. So try to follow along. If you've gone through the other videos, hopefully this one <clears throat> shouldn't be too far of a stretch for you to follow along. Uh, I'm gonna set my uh, all my um, properties from my dimension line and extension lines to by layer so they follow the properties of the, of the layer um, I'm going to let's see extension beyond dim lines we're gonna set that to 1 16th of an inch offset is 1 16th of an inch uh, I'm not gonna worry about baseline spacing because I'm not gonna do that under the symbols and arrows I'm gonna leave all of these closed you know what just for the sake of like doing something different let's go with architectural tick leader can be closed filled arrow size is gonna be 1 8th of an inch um, break size is fine at one eighth of an inch. Jog height factor will be one um, instead of one and a half. We don't need to worry about jog angle or arc length. I'm not doing those. My text is going to be uh, main. We're going to use main now. Um, but I'm going to go modify. Well, I can set my text height here uh, at three thirty seconds. Industry standard. Set my text color to by layer. Fill color to none. Um, no frames around text. The placement is going to be above the dimension line for my vertical placement. Horizontal will be centered. View direction left to right. Offset from dim line, three thirty seconds. Let's go one sixteenth, which is two thirty seconds. Uh, text alignment is going to be aligned with the dimension line. My fit, either text or arrows, whichever is best fit, that works fine. Placement beside the dimension line is fine. Uh, scaling of one over here because I'm going to be in paper space. Um, we do want to draw the dimension line between extension lines if my dimensions are too small. We want to force that dimension line to show up. Units are going to be architectural. My precision is 1 16th. That's fine. Fraction format will be diagonal. Um, no prefix, no suffix, no round off. Uh, my zero suppression, we are not going to suppress inches, but we will suppress feet. Um, and my scale factor is fine at one because we're going to auto scale through the viewport. I just realized I haven't gone through scaling in the viewport. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So um, if you hear this section of the video, because I'm not going to edit this, I don't really care. But if you hear the section of the video, I'm probably going to go back and add a video on dimension scaling. So if you're hearing this, just ignore it. I'm going to add one later on and insert it in the series. Okay, uh, we don't need alternate units. Everything else here is good. Hit OK, hit close. 
Uh, we got our text style set up. Actually, it's saved from the last time I was I was in a, doing this. My title text, I want it to be uh, good for this size. So I'm going to set this to 3 8 now because we're in paper space. Okay. And M leader style. Let me go check out what that looks like. Text height, 330 seconds. Uh, landing gap is 1 16th. Leader structure, that's fine. Landing distance, 1 8th is what I want to use. And leader format, arrowhead, definitely not 1 8th. Break size, 1 8th is fine. Okay. Oh, I want to change that to main also. Standard main. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Yep, 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 yep. Good. Close. All right. Let's do some dimensions. I'm going to do a uh, dim linear. Turn my OSNAP back on. Do a string from here. Do a dim continue. Do another set from here to here. Um, and I can... This thing works... Uh, this uh, dimension space works awesome, but keep in mind, uh, and I'm going to use it right now to space this thing. I'm going to set this thing at uh, probably quarter inch. So I'm going to click this one and click that one and set it to um, one quarter. Uh, did we not do that? Oh, that's right. I forget. Uh, dimension spacing does not work well with fractions, so you have to use decimal. So 0.25. All right, cool. Two things. Uh, oh, well, so first I want to let you know. Uh, so enter your dimension style. Over here, when you go to modify and you go to fit, right here you have text placement besides the dimension line, over the dimension line with the leader, over the dimension line without a leader. If you choose to use, did not mean to rhyme that, uh, the dimension space command that I just did, it will set your text placement back to beside the dimension line. So keep that in mind. It works great, but and it, it, it's awesome if you're already using beside the dimension line. But if you're not using beside the dimension line, if you're using something like this, my company tends to use over the dimension line without a leader because we, we move the text manually a lot, um, then you're going to want to uh, keep in mind that if using that command will set, set uh, your dimensions that you just modified to be beside the dimension line. Okay. All right. Looking at these uh, dimensions in place, I, I know that I feel like I want to make a few tweaks. So I'm going to go to my dimension style editor, modify <clears throat> um, my offset from the dim line. I actually want to be 132nd. I think that's decent. Um, I don't know why it just made all this stuff look different, but whatever. Um, I also want to change my architectural tick size down to maybe 332nd or probably 116th actually. No, no, 332nd. Let's try that. Hit OK. Yeah, that looks more reasonable. Not, I mean, even these could stand to be a little smaller. Actually, I will do that. Make those 1 16th. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, stretch this and turn my ortho back on. Uh, do a little dimension from like here to here, maybe. And I can just put this, space this manually back at 0.25. Um, and probably do a, uh, dimension from here to here. Oh, it didn't aligned. Not mean to do that. There. Cool. Um, it chose to put this one. Let me open my properties. Move text, no leader. What's my default? When did that change? Did I accidentally change that? Did anybody see me change that? Modify, primary units, I'm oh, sorry, fit, beside, hit OK, hit OK. There it goes. So it places it on the outside. All right. So um, do I have a dimension layer? Did I make a dimension layer? I did not. So we'll make a new dimension layer. And we'll put it on cyan. And I don't have a text layer either, so we'll make a text layer. And we'll put that on, I don't know, white. Okay, so put all these on my uh, dimension layer and do another string of dimensions over here just for posterity. Uh, what's up with my style? How come it's not saving? I, ju I just saw that it said uh, align with dimension line. I even checked it. Did I? 
everything's good here. One sixteenth. My text offset. I fit. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. All right. So text is aligned with the mission line. All right. So here we go. So we're gonna do a dim continue. Get to here. And it wants to put a leader. Oh my goodness. I can already see it under. No, it didn't. Beside the dimension line. These are part of standard. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm tripping. I am tripping. Okay, so here we go. Let's dimension the rest of this. So let's say we do like this wall um, here. And then uh, dim continue to the end. And then here to here to here. And then we'll use that dim space command. So we're going to grab this one and say these and 0.25. And then they are nicely stacked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, dim layer. And then notice how I have this here. I want to put a dim break. We have two options. We can go the auto route. But the auto route sometimes makes this break here, um, which I don't like. Um, it happens on some dimensions. So a lot of times, most of the time, I prefer to go with a manual dim break. So I'm going to say manual. Just give something I feel like is roughly e uh, equal. You can see it kind of creates this break line. It's, it's not exact, um, but I'm not too concerned about that. And I'll do another one, manual, and I'll just, uh, this one. Okay, so it's not allowing me to snap to the end of the dimension line, and there's a reason for that. If you go to your options and go to drafting, uh, is it drafting? It's under snaps. I know it's under snaps. So yeah, it should be under drafting. Uh, ignore dimension extension lines. If you uncheck that, you should be able to snap to that. So like when you go do a break line here, oops, and I do a manual, I can snap to the extension line right there. So that way, because I already I created one and made a break, and by doing that, see I can snap to the extension line now. Again, that was options, if you don't feel like going back. Under the drafting tab, uncheck ignore dimension extension lines. This way you can snap to your dimension extension lines. You can also uh, uncheck ignore hatch objects and snap to your hatch pattern. So, uh, okay. So there we go, we had that nice little break in there now. So that looks nice. Do we, ha do we have a need for that over here? No, we don't have a need for that over here. All right, so we got our dimensions. Let's add uh, some leaders. So let's do, again, we're going to go with a uh, multi-leader. So I'm just going to type an M leader. I normally have a command alias for that, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, I'm going to put that here, and I'm going to say, um, uh, let's say, uh, usually, what, what did I used to call these windows out? It was like a, like a 3060 window, you know, like 3 foot, 6 foot, 3 foot by 6 foot, or you can say something. Well, if you had a window schedule, let's say 3 foot. by six foot window and you can either do like a manual return or you can just respace this so you get something like that and I'm gonna put this on the uh, dimension layer since it's a leader um, so you get something like that with your your uh, your leader you can uh, do something like this copy this reposition it and then edit the text and just say, um, you know, 42 inch cabinets. Extend that, send that out a little bit. Bring that down to like right here or something. You know, or however you want to do something like that. So we got we got those two things. Let's put a text window in. And my text window is massive right now because I think my text height is going to be four. Um, but I don't want to use that. I want to use main or title which I have set to 3 8 Roman D. And actually, I don't even want to use 3 8 Even that's too big. I should have put 3 16 And we're going to put um, just floor. Oops. Floor plan. We're going to center this, take off the dynamic columns, go back into it. Remember what I was telling you earlier. Um, and then uh, what we can do, you can actually have two different fonts. You can't have two different styles in the same drawing. Like I can't change this because it'll it'll want to change all of it. Uh, so it gives you the warning. 
it says this change will affect all text objects using this style, not just the selection. Do you want to change a text style? No. But what you can do is I can have Roman D here on the top and just say something like, uh, what was our scale? It was um, uh, 316. So I can say scale 316 inch equals one foot zero inches. And then I can like select this and select my text, uh, select my font and change my font size down and do something like that. And then maybe underline this. And I can even like do, like I can set this whole thing so like a, like a um, maybe I want my title text to be darker. So I put my title text on, uh, like we put the whole thing on a text color, a text layer. Um, and I can change my title text. Let's say like purple was a heavier color. I can do something like that and just change that so that the, this comes out real heavy and this comes out like a lighter color. So there's like some M text and you can see it's kind of big. So if I want to, I can, I think I can, you notice how this rectangle, this uh, square grip is in the corner and that lets me know the justification, not the justification internally, the internal justification is set to center, but the placement of the text object is aligned for top left. I can change that over here to middle center or middle top, maybe middle top would be good. Where's middle top or top middle, top center. There it is. It puts that center grip th there. And now I can just scale this back a bit or however I, what I need to. And there we go. And so you got some basic annotation. And I can do some labels here if I want to. I can do some single line labels. Uh, text height, we don't want it to be that big. Let's say uh, we want it to be 3 16 again. And we can say uh, living. We don't even want that style. What style are we using? No, not standard. We want to use uh, main. And then uh, set that to, uh, let's do a DT, size to 3 16 say living. Go ahead and change the, um, the justification to center. Move that back. It will move when you change the justification through properties, so keep that in mind. Um, and change this to the text layer. Uh, if you match properties between text, I don't know about leaders to text, uh, it's, it will change sometimes. Like this one just changes as a layer. But let's say that I have, um, let's copy this over here. I'm doing a lot of things like I do at work where I have my preferred setup. I haven't finished setting everything up here because I'm trying to do things the regular way. Um, so let's change my height to 330 three, 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 three seconds. I stutter a lot, my bad. All right, so I can match properties and it will change the text height when I match properties. It's one of the things that it, ch it, it doesn't just match like the, the, the layer or the color, it matches all the properties or a lot of the properties, uh, including the text height. So if you want to match text height, including layer, you can do that like that. All right, so we can copy this around. Maybe I do want it smaller. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, got some dust in my room or something. All right, I'm gonna match properties in, make it a little smaller. And I'm going to underline this. So I'm going to, you can actually, so you can do percent percent U, uh, select the whole, what is it? It's percent percent U and do it that way. Or you can just select the whole thing and hit control U, which I think is easier on to me a lot easier. All right. So copy this and put one there and put one there and say bed, you know, bedroom one. Bedroom two. Mind you, this uh, this house does not have a restroom. Um, so we're going to call it a bungalow. I think that works better. More a shack. It's got a kitchenette, though. That's a plus. And a back door. I don't know where it's going to. Uh, so, and bedroom two has no windows. It's kind of a prison cell, <clears throat> moreover. All right. So uh, these are all on my text layer. I prefer not to have things on the on a white color for layers. Um I do. I mean, I've, I've definitely used them on white layers. The reason being is because a lot of times zero will be your default layer, and you may not be able to tell quickly if something is on the zero layer or the proper text layer. So it's a good a good practice to try to put, you know, stuff on other layers. In this case, we'll use uh, I don't know green. I don't. I'm just picking random colors here. Companies have their own preset colors and all that. So, um, but this is the colors I'm going with. All right. There we go. And there we there's our annotation. We've just annotated a house basically. Um Yeah. There you go. There's annotation. Um I do have 
an example of like of of uh, annotation somewhere. Uh, it's, you're looking through all my personal files. Let me let me uh, find it. I don't even know, honestly. I don't remember. I uh, I have another drawing. I'll, I'll probably bring up an example drawing in another setting, but just not right now. Um, that's it. So hopefully you have a, an understanding of everything that goes along with annotation, like for the basics. Um, we did aim leader. We did dimensions. We did text. Um, I can't really think of any other. We didn't do any circles, so maybe we'll do a radius. You can do a radius dimension like this. Um, you got to show the radius or an angle. If you want to show the angle of an opening or something like that, you can do, well, I, I don't have it. I need it. In order for this, this to work, I have to have something here, like a threshold or something. I don't know, a door? There. So, there. You can do an angle dimension that way. Uh, yeah. So I think you got the gist of it of how you can use dimensions and things like of that nature. You can edit dimensions manually, so you can you know you can add on to it and say something like I don't know total length or whatever. I don't mind putting that here. I should put it on top or whatever. Um, you can actually erase the the dimension and just leave the text alone. Um, if you do that, if you want to bring the text back, it's uh, less than, greater than. I think I've already said that once already. Um, if you want to start a new line, if you just hit enter, it's going to put it on top. If you want to have that one, like one, like the the dimension above, or like the first line above and the next line below. I think I also went through this. I honestly don't remember. But again, it's um, backslash capital X. Okay, I'm gonna say so. It's hard. You can't really see it like this, but no space. See, I just delete it. capital. So when you look at the if when you look at the value and properties where it says contents or whatever, where is it at? See how it says the uh, the brackets. That's the dimension is the, the uh, uh, less than greater than, and then it's got that backslash x, and then it's got uh, total length. So it's got the dimension which is ten four, and then the backslash x which is the return line, and then it's got the words total length underneath, and then from here you can put you know next line next line or whatever so and I believe you might be able to change this after the fact um, yeah you can change that that text because it's again it's like it's like any other M text editor you can you can put a field in here if you wanted to this kind of is almost like a field but it, not really so I hope that squares things away I'm really kind of flying by the seat of my pants here um, eventually I'll, I'll get to doing like a, a ground up drawing uh, how I would do it. I'll have all my command aliases set and I'll probably bring a, a border uh, and have everything ready to go and do like a legit drawing like you would see at a company, especially once I start getting into my own material. Um, I plan to do that. I, I may not do so much uh, architectural because it's been a while since I've done that. Um, and I was going to focus on doing um, civil structural design, uh, especially in, in industrial or oil and gas, which is what I do. Seeing as how there's probably, from what I've seen, not too many tutorials on that kind of stuff. It's more of a learn on the job kind of thing. Um, I figure it would be helpful to have something like that uh, for people to learn from, um, you know, without having to wait to see what it's like. So, uh, and there you go. Put that all together with our annotation.